so in continuation to the previous class uh, in the previous class uh, uh, we have seen uh, this question which is example 11 if you see alpha beta gamma be distinct real numbers with the position vectors alpha beta gamma beta gamma alpha gamma alpha beta they are in cyclic order and hence the distance between ab bc and ce are equal and hence it forms a an equilateral triangle we have seen this okay now uh, let us move on to the next question uh, which is important one the position example 12 please <laughs> the position vectors of the vertices abc of triangle uh, are 1 minus 3 Sir. 1 minus 1 minus 3 2 1 minus 2 minus 5 yes. 2 minus 6 respectively the length of the bisector AD of the angle BAC, where D is the segment, uh, D is the midpoint of BC, or uh, D is on the segment BC. Okay, D is on the segment BC. Okay, you're saying something, uh, Kaushik? Uh, screen sharing, sir. Okay, just a moment. Yeah. <clears throat> Mm, let me share the screen now. Now, just a moment. Oh. Yeah. Now, let us see this uh, next question here. This one. The position vectors of the vertices ABC of a triangle. Let me draw the triangle. One minute. This one uh, I have taken. This model is important. This question model is important. This is the triangle ABC. Let me write the coordinates of A as 1 minus 1 minus 3. And B, 2, 1 minus 2. And C, minus 5, 2 minus 6. What is asking is the length of the bisector AD of the angle BAC. Angle BAC. Okay. Let me show you the exact diagram. Now this is, you can see, uh, we need the length of the angular bisector. This concept is important. Here, this is angle BAC. Just see this carefully. This is angle BAC. Now, we need the length of the angular bisector of BS. He named it as AD. We need AD length. And very important point to be noticed is that angular bisector always divides its opposite side in the ratio of other two sides, please. I repeat. Angular, internal angular bisector of a triangle divides its opposite side in the ratio of other two sides. That is, let us find out AB length. AB length is mind calculation. This is 1 plus 4, 5, 5 plus 1, root 6. And this is 36 plus 9, 45, 45 plus 9, root 54. Root 54 is uh, 3 root 6. Now understand that this D divides BC in the ratio root 6 is to 3 root 6. That is 1 is to 3. I think you might have learned this in your lower classes itself. The internal angular bisector divides its opposite side in the ratio of other two sides. Is it okay, both of you, please? Yes, sir. 
now i am writing the coordinates of d vinith using section formula okay sir section formula i am writing directly because you know i add 1 into minus 5 minus 5 okay. plus 6 1 by 4 or oh, you are getting a fraction here similarly this is 2 plus 3 5 by 4 And this is minus six, minus six, minus twelve by four. I'm keeping that four as it is because anyway you have to find out the distance. So you got the coordinates of D now. Therefore, we need the length of AD. Is nothing but x one minus x two whole square plus y one minus y two whole square plus z one minus z two whole square. That is distance formula one minus one by four. I'm writing eighty square here. One minus one by four whole square. So three by four whole square. Nine by sixteen. Mind calculation, please. And it is uh, minus one minus five by four. Eighty one by sixteen. And it is minus three plus three. I think this is zero. So uh, implies the length of uh, AD. Is nothing but root ninety by four. That is three root ten by four units. So your learning must be here in this problem, and the revision of the concept is that the internal angular bisector of A triangle always divides its opposite side in the ratio of other two sides. In the ratio of other two sides means you have to find out their lengths and you find the ratio. Root six is to three root six. And when you know the ratio, we have written applied the section formula. We have got the coordinates of D and thereby we got the distance of AD. This is length of the internal angular bisector. Length of the internal angular bisector. Is it clear? We'll check the answer. Yes, Yes, sir. Yeah, we will check the answer now. Oh, uh, three by four root ten. We got it, I think. Yeah. Yes, three sir. Three by four root ten. That's the first option. Kaushik. Sir. Clear, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. I'm erasing this. Now, please work out along with me. while working out these problems next the median ad of the triangle abc is bisected at e be meets ac in f then af is to ac is needed let me draw the triangle and let me take the data this is triangle abc let us write the data here this is triangle abc let me say and what is saying is uh the median ad of the triangle abc median means it is a line joining any vertex to the midpoint of its opposite side let us say the midpoint of bc be d please d now this becomes the median this becomes the median yes sir ad becomes mm -hmm. the median yes. now what is saying is is bisected at e you know the meaning of bisection it is the midpoint yes sir midpoint bisected at e B E meets A C in F. B E meets A C in F. So here, this is B E, please. Okay, this is the data. Then what it needs is A F is two. This is AF is to AC. He's saying AF is to AC. This is AF. This is AC. 
that's what he needs okay let us now move to the working what is that needed af is to h af is to ac is needed Kaushik. Yeah. While solving this type of problems, you know, it is better you take a simplified triangle. What I mean to say by simplified triangle, if you keep the triangle on X and Y axis, the triangle will be simplified. That's what Thank I mean to say. Sir. That will become a right angle triangle. So let me do it in this way. Just I'm modifying this in okay. this way now. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just making it perpendicular. Let me remove this. I'm making it perpendicular here. Okay. Uh, this is, I'm saying this base as x axis. And uh, the other side as y axis. This is what I mean to say by simplified form of the triangle. Okay, sir. Now I'll be taking this as a right angle, the triangle. Because, because it is the property of a triangle, the property should be common to all the triangles. So, what I'm doing, I'm taking up a triangle which is a right angle triangle, whatever the result we get should also be common to all the triangles because it is property of a triangle. So I'm taking it now as A, uh, B, C. Now what he's saying is, he's saying that D is the midpoint of B, C and thereby A, D becomes, thereby A, D becomes the median. AD becomes the median. Now, AD becomes the median, and he's also saying that that E is bisecting AD. What does it mean by bisection, please? Making it into two equal parts. That means E is midpoint of AD, we can say simply. Yes, sir. Now, is also saying that this CE is meeting AB in F. In F. Now it is clear. What is to be find out there? I wrote the question mark here. AF is to AC, no? AF is to AC. Let us interchange this. AF is to AC. Let me interchange this too. Yeah, I'm making it B. This is C. This is B, this is C. Is there any lag in my writing? No, sir. It's clear, no? Not, not like previous class. Yes, uh, sir. Uh. No, sir. No, sir. So let me take this as zero bar. This is what I mean to say by simplified triangle, zero bar. Okay. Let me take it as I bar. Or you, let us, it need not be uh, solved in vectors only. You can take uh, as per your choice, no problem at all. What I'm doing, because uh, I need uh, the midpoint here for this. I'll, I'll take care, uh, I, I, I'll be choosing the coordinates in such a way that there will be no fraction. If fraction is there, simplification little, but it takes time. That's the reason why what I'm doing, I'm taking this as two comma zero. You'll understand now why, why I'm taking two comma zero. Here also, I'm taking this as zero comma two. That means I have considered a right angled isosceles triangle. Is it here? Yes, sir. Now, this is a right angle. Now, 
do you tell me the coordinates of D, please? Sir? Coordinates of D, please. Coordinates of D. Uh, midpoint of, uh, sir, one comma, one. That's it. Still, uh, because E is the midpoint of AD, you will get one by two, one by two. So even if you want to avoid this, just I'm teaching you some techniques here to solve the problems easily. You can make it four. Then what happens? Let us check. You can make it four comma zero because it is, we have taken this as an isosceles triangle. Four comma zero, zero comma four. And do you tell me now what is D? Two comma two. Yes, sir. And thereby I can write the coordinates of E, please. Do you tell me coordinates of E now? This is zero, zero. This is two, two. Sir, zero, one comma one. One comma one, sir. Yes. One comma one. Now this line is meeting this AC in F. We need the coordinates of F and so that uh, we can straight away write the ratio then. We can straight away write the ratio then. To avoid any confusion here, what I'm doing, I'm just showing this perfectly that it is x-axis, not to have any confusion. Oh, I'm showing this in this way. This is x-axis and this is y-axis. Okay, so this is x, x and y. Now, uh, I need the uh, f coordinates here, f coordinates here. Uh, what I'm doing, I'm just uh, taking the equation of B and uh, making X zero because F is a point on Y axis. And on Y axis, as you know, X coordinate is perfectly zero. We need only Y coordinate. Correct or not? So if you need Y coordinate now, you need the coordinates of F we don't know in which ratio this F divides uh, BE. So let me say this as uh, some lambda is to one and uh, let me equate this to zero. Just a moment, please. Just a moment. Just see this carefully. I'm taking the required ratio as lambda is to one. Now, yes, <clears throat> do you apply this now? One into four, four, I'm applying section formula. That means I'm writing E now, E is equal to one into four, four plus lambda into uh, MX2 plus NX1, zero divided by lambda plus one is zero you're getting. I'm writing here is equal to uh, comma, comma, this we don't know. This y coordinate we don't know. Let it be y, please. Yeah. yeah, come on, tell me why now. This is one into zero, zero plus lambda y divided by lambda plus one is the coordinates of e, but e we know it is one comma one. Implies your lambda plus one is equal to cross multiply this. Lambda plus one is equal to four and lambda is equal to three. When lambda is equal to three, you substitute it here. Three y is equal to three y please, three y, three y. Lambda three, we got it already. Three y divided by three plus one, four must be equal to one and thereby y is equal to four by three. So we have got, we have got y coordinates, please. We have got y coordinates. So therefore, now you can write this. Therefore, f is equal to 
what? Zero comma four by three. Now what is that? We need AF is to AC. Therefore, AF please. AF, A is always in here. AF is 4 by 3. And AC, please. Now we are experiencing that. Okay. AC length we have taken to be 4. AC length I have taken to be 4. Now find the ratio, please. Do you tell me the ratio now? Do you tell me the ratio now, please? F is to AC. Sir, can you repeat it, sir, once? Yeah, F, uh, uh, this is a section formula I applied, E is one comma one. Okay, sir. One ratio, sir, F is to? Uh, AF A F is to AC. AC, it is there as a point. Yes, sir, one by three, sir, one is to three. Ah, that's it. Three is to one or one is to three? One is to three. One is to three. One is to three. Therefore, final answer AF is to AC is equal to one is to three. We have not used any vector properties here because triangle is two dimensional. You can proceed with all the properties, you know, and you can simply solve like this by taking a simplified triangle, what I mean to say. By taking a simplified triangle, you can solve this type of questions instead of going for vector method. Sometimes it is inevitable to go for vector methods, but whenever you have to find out the ratio and all, in case of uh, triangles and uh, parallelogram or any quadrilateral, then you need not have to go for vector methods. You can straight away do like this. Okay, so the answer should be one is to three. I repeat this. What I did, I have taken a right angle, isosceles triangle to solve the problem easily. And uh, is it possible that we can, we can uh, take an isosceles triangle as we like? Yes, we can take because whatever take. the properties are there, all the properties of a triangle means properties of a triangle means that should be common to all the triangles. So what I'm doing, because it is the objective question, what I'm doing, I'm considering a comfortable triangle for me. That is why I made the triangle to sit on X and Y axis. I made the triangle to sit on X and Y axis and thereby one of the vertices becomes zero and uh, I have taken B as four zero and C as zero four because I have considered an isosceles triangle. This is a four units length, this is a four units length. And thereby, I can avoid the fraction here. That is the reason why I have taken the midpoint of this as 2, comma 2. And thereby, E is given to a midpoint of the uh, median AD. So midpoint is 0 plus 2 by 2, 1, 0 plus 2 by 2, 1. Now I have got the coordinates of E here. Now this BE is intersecting this AC in F, in F. Oh, but F, I know it is lying on Y axis. That is why I have taken the point as 0, comma Y. So if it is 0, comma Y, then what I'm doing, I'm applying the section formula to BF because I know E. Let me, let me suppose that E is dividing BF in the ratio lambda is to 1. I applied the section formula mx2 plus nx1 by m plus n. This is the formula I got. But E coordinates, I know it is 1 comma 1. From x coordinate, I got the value of lambda as 3 by cross multiplication. And that lambda is substituted here. Three y by four is equal to one. Y I have got it to be four by three, and thereby I got f is equal to zero comma four by three. When f is zero comma four by three, I know a is zero zero. AF length I have got it to be four by three, and the AC length I have already taken to be four. Now AF is to AC means it is uh, four for getting angle is one by three. So one is to three is the ratio in which uh, f. I should not say f. Uh, in, in, in the one is to three is the ratio of AF and AC. AF and AC. Uh, if if you are asked to find out AF is to FC, any one of you do you answer me. If sir? if you are asked to find out AF is to FC, I'm saying FC is to FC. 
let me check the answer it should be 1 is to 3 yeah how he did it just you check he used the vectors because it is vector algebra whatever he is explaining is that explanation should be there and if it is the subject to question what i mean to say by subject to question if you are solving this question in the board examination then you may have to do like this but even uh, you can do what i explained you also by taking i bar j bar no problem at all you can follow that method also if it is a board exam okay now next important part of this vector algebra is linear combination of vectors this i explained you in the beginning itself linear combination exists for the coplanar vectors important please you have to listen to that carefully linear combination of vectors exists for collinear vectors or parallel vectors and coplanar vectors so uh let me revise once so that you will be remembering that what i mean to say if a bar is parallel to b bar implies a bar is equal to lambda b even collinear also it exists this is called linear combination please visualize this see utilize the coaching please don't think that you can prepare it later and all don't think like that whatever i am teaching just follow them carefully and just try to remember what i am teaching because you will be lucky now if you see the neat exam this year it has gone very easy and uh, see the fate of the real remaining students getting 720 out of 720 is a pathetic situation really i'm telling you never it happened in the history see that much of easy the paper is one should not give the paper like that because the average and above average students will be the sufferers excellent students anyway they will be getting rank so this only happen this only will happen in your case also okay sir and the paper will be definitely easy if the paper is easy competition will be uh more competition will be there and even one mark difference will also uh, cost a lot yes sir so the chemistry what my one of my friend is saying they have taught them in very very higher level but that neat chemistry paper was very very easy when the top marks are very high no the competition will be very tough and the sufferer will be above average and average generally students so this year definitely they will give instructions to give the paper easily because of this corona definitely so what i am appealing you whatever i am teaching just visualize them listen to them carefully and just visualize them so that if it if it is visualized then uh, you can remember them easily so this is called linear combination now this linear combination happens only whenever they are parallel or collinear similarly if uh, Uh, three vectors a bar b bar c bar are coplanar i derived this also in the previous classes 
if they are coplanar, there exists a linear relation between these vectors. A bar is equal to xb bar plus yc bar. Where x and y are non-zero scalars. x, y are non-zero scalars. If such a linear relation exists, then only we can say that they are coplanar. If such linear relation is not existing, we say that they are non coplanar. So, and vice versa. What I mean to say by this, we are talking about coplanarity. Kaushik is there? Yes, sir. When we are talking about coplanarity, we are saying that there exists a linear relation. When we are talking about uh, collinearity or parallel, we are talking about the linear relation. Now the case is, if this is not happening, what I mean to say, if this is not happening and this is not also happening and uh, this is happening, this is happening and this is also happening, then what should it be done? That means you must be knowing converse in the theorems in your lower classes. You might have learned converse is also true. Converse is also true. But in this case, if they are parallel, we said that they are linear. Their linear combination exists. If they are coplanar, we are saying that the linear combination exists. But if in any case, linear combination is existing and they are not coplanar. Linear combination is existing and they are not parallel. Then what should happen? What should happen? Let me write this in a modified form like this. What I mean to say by modified form, instead of uh, A bar is equal to lambda B bar, I can express it like this. Something like L A bar plus M B bar is equal to zero bar. And instead of writing like this, I can say <coughs> L A bar plus M B bar plus N C bar is equal to zero bar. Both are same. Both are same. But <laughs> instead of this lambda is something like L by M. Understand that. Lambda, if I say lambda is equal to, for example, I'm telling you like this. If I say lambda is equal to, no confusion here, lambda is equal to minus M by L, let me say. Then what will it happen, Kaushik? A bar is equal to minus M by L into B bar. Cross multiply, what is that again? You tell me. So, Still, I didn't get that one. The one which you wrote, A bar equals to. This one, huh? No, sir. You just uh, told us uh, A bar equals to minus M by B bar. It didn't yet appear on the screen, sir. Okay, okay, okay. That's what you're saying. Okay. Uh, Pranith, do you have the same problem? Yeah, no, sir. I can see it. Now you got it, Kaushik? Yes, sir. What I'm saying, this one A bar is equal to lambda B bar and L A bar plus M B bar is equal to zero bar, both are same, I'm saying. How? That's what I'm showing. If lambda is equal to something like a fraction minus M by L, a rational number. So if you replace a lambda with minus M by L, what is that you are getting L A bar plus M B bar is equal to zero bar. So what I mean to say, both are same. That's what I'd like to tell you. Okay, so now if this is like this and they are non collinear, non parallel, and if this is like this and they are non coplanar, they are non coplanar. If they are coplanar, there exists a linear relation. If they are collinear or parallel, there exists a linear relation. But being, being a linear relation here, we can say that they are coplanar according to this. So, what, I'm, what I mean to say, if and only if it's possible or not vice versa is possible or not, or converse is possible or not. No, 
It's not possible. Something like A bar is not parallel to B bar. I, I put an into mark here, not parallel, but linear relation is given. And the A bar, B bar, C bar are coplanar. I put an into mark here. No, they are not coplanar. Still a linear relation is given like this. Then what must happen? What must happen uh, besides non-coplanarity, besides non-coplanarity, linear relation given, then what must happen? No, each of the scalar must be zero. Very important, please. You can get even a passage question in the advanced level. Besides non-coplanarity, if the linear relation is existing, then we can say that L is equal to M is equal to N is equal to zero. That means each of the scalar must be zero. In this case also, each of the scalar must be zero besides uh, non besides non collinearity or non coplanarity non uh, parallel besides a bar b bar non collinear non parallel then even though the linear relations exist it is possible only when each of the scalar is zero each of the scalar is zero okay now i'll ex extend it it's not that easy to understand. I'll extend it. Let us see the statement given by him so that you will be understanding exactly with that statement. Let me show you that. A vector, Koshi, can you read this? Mm -hmm. I'm underlining it. Are you mm -hmm. reading? No, sir. Ah, then you can read it. Come on, read that. Okay. I'm, I'm underlining it. Come on, read this. A vector R is said to be linear combination of vectors A, B, C, etc. If there exists scalar x, y, z, etc., such that R equals to x a plus y plus z c plus so on. Correct, no? So this is called linear combination of vectors. Of vectors. And x, y, z are scalars. Yes, sir. Now, read the example also. For example, vectors R1 equals to 2A plus B plus 3C equals to A plus 3B plus root 2C are linear combination of vectors A, B, C. Yeah. These are written in bold letters means uh, they are all vectors. Yes, sir. They are all vectors, bold letters shown in the bold letters. 2, letter. two all... 1, 3 pairs, the coefficients of vectors. Yes, yes, yes. So now, uh, this is the meaning of linear combination. And what he's talking about next? He's talking about this. Collinear and non-collinear vectors. And A bar and B bar be two non-collinear vectors and X be the unit vector in the direction of A bar. Then the unit vector in the direction of B bar is X or minus X according as A bar and B bar are like or unlike parallel vectors. Now, A bar can be written as modulus of A bar into X cap. B bar can be written as plus or minus mod B bar into X cap, where cap represents the unit vector. Okay. That is, it is uh, simple that uh, he is writing a linear combination between them. You will understand this. Um, this explanation I do not like, but I will explain you that. No problem. What is the meaning of this collinearity here? Collinearity of two vectors is decided by their linear combination. Linear combination means if A bar is collinear or parallel with another vector B bar, then you must have a linear combination like this. A bar is equal to lambda B bar. And if you remember my previous explanation, in my previous explanation, what I did, I have taken a line segment and I have taken points on this line segment, A, B, and C is midpoint. D is midpoint of AC, E is midpoint of CB. Then, if you remember, I wrote AD as three fourth of uh, one uh, one fourth of AB. And similarly, you can write AC is twice of AD. You can write AE. three times of CE or not? Is it correct or not? Yes, sir. 
this is possible because they are lying on the same line they are collinear and now i am converting them to vectors by drawing a line on their heads like this now you tell me what is a common property that can be observed here what is a common property that can be observed here you can observe that there exists a linear relation between the segments with a scalar in between them with a scalar in between them so it is generalized like this if they are collinear or parallel there exists a linear relation between them in vectors we call it as a bar is equal to lambda b bar if you are able to express like this we can say they are collinear if you are not able to express like this we say that they are non collinear even if it is same in the case of even if it is even if uh, even if you take the case of uh, the collinear uh, parallel vectors it is same it is same so linear relations existing they are parallel or collinear okay this i already explained you but it seems that you have forgotten good boys now let us move on to the next part of it now he has given it here are prinith please read this prinith babu this first sentence i am underlining it yes sir yeah this one please yeah thus if a b are collinear vectors then a is equal to lambda uh, lambda b or b is equal to lambda a for some scalar lambda that's what you have to remember that means this is what i explained just now a is equal to right. lambda b or b is equal to lambda oh b is scalar right. lambda oh that means there must be a linear relation between yes sir similarly i need not only explain you just now i said relation between two parallel vectors will be just like this x a bar plus y b bar is equal to zero bar is same as that both are same here lambda lambda value you can give something like minus y by x if you give lambda value minus y by x you will get this so the condition for coplanar the parallel and the collinearity is one and the same is one and the same now very important point please please listen this listen to this that's okay up to that it is okay what i explain you just now what i explain you is this see if they are Pranit, please, please read this. If a and b are two non-zero, non-parallel vectors, x of a plus y of b is equal to zero, where x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. This is what I am saying. What is the yes. point to be noted here? In the previous cases, vector. they are parallel. These are non-parallel. These are non-parallel, and the linear relation is existing. Yes, sir. If the linear relation is existing. we have to understand that they must be parallel but he has given that they are non parallel so being non parallel and uh, getting a linear combination like this is possible only when each of the scalars is zero each of the scalars is zero x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero okay this is important point uh kaushik babu sir i hope you understand what i am explaining there Yes, now very simple thing is that i already discussed this a bar is a1 a2 a3 b bar is b1 b2 b3 and uh, they are parallel vectors then 3d form i discussed a bar parallel to b bar in three dimensional geometry how do we say this if they are parallel a1 by a2 is equal to b1 by a1 by b1 is equal to a2 by b2 is equal to a3 by b3 that they coefficients of i j k must be proportional coefficients of i j k must be proportional that's what you have to understand hope you understand this yes sir next is coplanarity uh, collinearity of three points how to check collinearity the working rule this is simple even in straight line also it can be applied 2d line i'm talking about in 2d line if three uh, the two three lines are given and if you want to check their the test of collinearity of three points no or three points okay 
uh, this is points. Uh, if uh, three points are to be checked out, whether they are collinear or not, then simply, simply the determinant, discriminant, uh, de determinant must be zero. Determinant of <coughs> the points are given to be A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Just see this. The points yes, are given to be A1, A2, yes. B1, B2. Ah, you're saying something? Yes, sir. I'll do that. I'm... The points are given to be A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2. If they are collinear, not definitely the determinant part of it must become zero. A1, A2, 1, B1, B2, 1, C1, C2, 1 must be zero. If they are zero, if that uh, determinant is zero, then we can say that they are collinear. They are collinear. Collinear, yes, sir. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make you understand simply because you are habituated to answer the questions only and uh, you may not be knowing to form the questions. <coughs> now, I'll form such a question, such a question uh, where three points are collinear, where three points are collinear. Koshi, are you there? Yes, Kaushik Babu is gone, I think. I think he went. Is he there? Ah, he's there in the meeting, sir. Yeah, okay. Uh, Pranit, now you tell me a simple line uh, in 2D form. 2D form. A linear equation. Straight line equation in 2D form. Tell me any yes. line equation. Uh, 3x square? No, no, no. Line, a line equation. Uh, not pair of lines. A simple line equation, linear equation in the form of ax plus by plus c equal to 0. Uh, 3a? 3x uh, plus uh, 4y. Okay. Uh, plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, I am creating three points on it because I want to form a question. Are you shake? Sir. Now what I'm doing, I'm forming a question on three collinear points. Now I'm teaching you how to form the question first. If you understand forming the question, you can recognize the answer very easily. Do you understand what I'm saying, Koshi? Yes, sir. Are you there? Yes, sir. No. I just find uh, to bring one. Yeah. Are you, Pranit, what I'm doing, I'm modifying this equation. Okay, sir. Uh, to make it uh, easy because uh, if we want to form the question you can you can form three points on it by giving different values to x you will get different values to y that's it do you understand what i'm saying you can give different values to x by uh, you can get different values to y and thereby you can create three points on the line okay so what i'm doing i'm just making it simple then this x plus y plus 6 is equal to 0. Then uh, you tell me now uh, what I'm doing. I'm giving x minus 1. You tell me y, please. Yes, yes. I'm expecting y from you. x I gave minus 1. Tell me y, please. Sir, min uh, minus 1, sir. Oh, minus 5. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Prit, I'm giving uh, oh. x to. Come on, tell me why then. Okay. Substitute the x to here. Minus 8, sir. Minus 8. Now I'm giving y minus 2. Pranit, you have to tell me x then. 
substitute y minus 2 here in this one. Sir, 4. Uh, x is 4 or minus 4? Minus 4. Minus 4. Now question formed. Now, whether a minus 1 minus 5, b 2 minus 8, c minus 4 minus 2, or collinear or not. To form the question also, the professor must have a theoretical base, must have a standard result. So how I did it, I have taken a straight line. From this straight line only, I have formed these three points. Now I know that these three are collinear. Now if this question is given, let us suppose you don't know this. You don't know now whether they are collinear or not. Yes, sir. You don't know. So what is a working rule? Working rule is simple. I'll tell you like this. According to the theory given there, the working rule, we have to find out the determinant. Determinant is like this minus 1, minus 5, 1, this one, 2, minus 8, 1, and it is minus 4, minus 2, 1. Correct? Find out the determinant now, minus 8 plus 2, minus 8 plus 2, minus 6 into minus 1, 6, and it is minus 4, minus 2, minus 6 into minus 5 plus 30. And then next. Do you tell me? Minus 4 minus 30. What is it you're getting? Zero. Mm. And hence they are collinear. And hence they are collinear. This is what the condition given there. We formed the question, we solved the question. We formed the question, we solved the question. What are the other methods? Slope of AB is equal to slope of BC. Pranit knows this. Pranit, you were saying this in, a, in some previous class, you said this. Slope of AB is equal to slope of BC. BC. Uh, uh, slope of AB is equal to slope of BC, whatever. You can apply that also. Here, yes, this sir. is nothing but the area we got. Area yes, is equal to so, I have shown it uh, just to make you understand how it becomes zero in case of the determinant. Okay, sir. Kaushik, yeah. this is what uh, the condition just given, just check it out. This is what he's talking about. If this is non-zero, you can say that they are non- This is the collinearity of three points. Huh. So, next, test of coplanarity of three vectors. This is very important in every examination almost. Right from the board till the end of the advanced level, advanced level, you will have this one. Test of coplanarity of three vectors. Test of coplanarity of three vectors. And if you remember well, my dear students, I derived this, R bar is equal to XA bar plus YB bar. I said if three vectors are coplanar, there exists a linear relation between them. There exists a linear relation between them. And uh, if linear relation is existing, we can say that they are coplanar. Then what is the test of coplanarity? You have uh, two to three different methods for this. Even you have the determinant method also just like that we did it previously determinant method he is saying it is 4 by 4 matrix 
if you follow this it's okay but uh, need not be need not be what i'm saying if you go for this no 4 by 4 will take time to simplify correct no so how to proceed then the three points uh, and I, I, I explained in the beginning itself, you need not have to check for the coplanarity of three points I said in the previous classes. But I strongly believe that you have forgotten that. Whether you accept it or not, <laughs> you are not responding. I explained to you, I have taken a point in the yeast. Uh, I have taken a point in the west. I have taken one more point in the north. Sir, we are not supposed to react to such controversial topics while you are recording the class. Which one? I do not understand. We are not supposed to respond to such controversial topics. Oh. In while you are recording in the class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You are very talented. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> so, what I said, if you are talking about three points, you need not have to talk about three points coplanarity because three points will always be coplanar. But if you choose any other point, which is D, and if this D is lying, if this D is lying on the plane of ABC, we say that ABCD are coplanar. If D is not lying, if D is not lying on the plane of ABC, then we say that ABCD are non coplanar. This is what you have to understand about coplanarity. I explained it in the beginning class only. Okay, so. Remember, collinearity or parallel is to be discussed only for three points, not for two points. And if you take two points, now obviously two points will form a line and they will be always lying on the same line, collinear. If the third point is also lying on the same line, then we say that they are collinear. So collinearity is to be discussed about three points. And coplanarity is to be discussed about four points. Are you, are you remembering this? Now I discussed this in the first yes, sir. or second class. Yes, sir, second class. So if uh, four points are coplanar, then you can form three vectors using these four points. Like what? Let me take. Uh, let, let, let me say this D is a point here. Now you're not comfortable with uh, four points and you can convert them to three vectors like this. I'll be taking A as the position vector. AB is one position vector. AC is another vector. A is the position of uh, uh, the, the initial point. And uh, AD is another vector. Now, four points are converted to three vectors. Four points are converted to three vectors. For your comfort, what I'm saying, I'm saying this vector as A bar, this vector as B bar, this vector as C bar. That means four points can be converted to three vectors. How to? AB bar. You can say it as OB bar minus OA bar. Do you know this? Both of you, please. Yes, sir. This I named it as A bar. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Similarly, AC bar is nothing but OC minus OA. This I named it as B bar. AD bar can be converted as OD minus OA. This I named it as A bar, C bar. So, coplanarity is to be talked about. Coplanarity is to be talking about four points or three vectors. Remember that. If these three vectors are coplanar, then definitely there exists a linear relation between them such that A bar is equal to X B bar plus Y C bar. What I mean to say. Okay. 
So if linear relations existing, x, y are scalars, of course. x, y belongs to scalar, non-zero scalars, non-zero scalars. So this is about the coplanarity. So coplanarity of we 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 have seen collinearity with a determinant. Then how to see coplanarity further? You will be getting this. You know very well. Know uh, that is box of a b bar, a c bar, a d bar. Further, you will be learning this is equal to zero. Vector triple product becomes zero if they are coplanar. That is very easy method. Easy method. We will be seeing that. But linear combination method it takes a uh, little more time than that. So there are two methods. to prove the coplanarity one is uh, the triple product method scalar triple product method scalar triple product becomes zero and one more is linear combination method so let us understand directly the work of this now uh, we will we will we will take a problem and we will discuss that but uh, here let us understand linearly dependent linearly independent vectors so that the first part of vectors will be finished a oh, very very important one please very very important one even for passage questions in je advanced there is every chance of getting this type of uh, concepts as passage come on read that uh, kaushik sir this one linearly independent vector The set of non-zero vectors a one, a two, a so on a n is said to be linearly independent if x one, a one plus x two, a two plus x so on x n a n is equals to zero. That is plus x one equals to x two equals to x three so on x n equals to zero. Very very important point is they are not dependent vectors. They are independent vectors. if they are independent vectors you should not have a linear combination but he is saying that there exists a linear combination okay accepted if that linear combination is existing then it must be it must happen that is what should happen each of the scalar must be zero then only this happens this is the moral of this story that is being independent vectors you should not have a linear combination but being independent vectors if you have a linear combination then it is possible only when each of the scalars is zero then let us understand linearly dependent vectors come on continue reading that now sir yeah continue reading the second one linearly dependent vectors is set of vectors a1 a2 a so on a Is said to be linearly dependent. There exists scalar x one, x two, so on x n. Not all zeros such that x one a one, x two a two, so on x n a n is zero. Very very important is that he is saying not all zero. Why he said that in the above case just see all are zero, isn't it? Sir. In the above case, all are zero, but here not all zero, and there exists a linear relation because they are linearly dependent vectors. So linearly dependent vectors will have a linear combination, and linearly independent ve vectors will not have any linear combination. But if there is a linear combination given, then each of the scalar must be zero. If they are dependent vectors, there exists a linear relation such that at least one of the scalars must be non-zero. Okay, this is an important concept. which will be useful even for the passages okay let us uh, close this with this one now uh, now it is clearly given just uh, read this uh, prinit prinit let us close with this one come on read this once yes sir three vectors a is equal to a1i plus a2i a2j plus a3k B is equal to B. B one, B two, B three. You read them like that. B one, B two, B three. Sure. Mm. C is equal to C one plus C two plus C three. Be linearly dependent. If found only. Vector S I F F A one, A two, A three, B one, B two, B three, C one, C two, C three is equal to zero. That's what it is. I said, if they are vectors, 
if they are vectors you can straight away find the determinant and uh, if the determinant is zero then you can say that comfortably they are coplanar they are coplanar now if you see the properties of linearly independent dependent vectors two non zero non collinear vectors are linearly independent non zero non collinear any two collinear vectors are linearly dependent any two collinear vectors are linearly dependent any three non coplanar vectors are linearly independent any three coplanar vectors are linearly dependent any four vectors in three dimensional space are linearly dependent okay how many vectors he is talking about in the fifth point four vectors four vectors in three dimensional uh, space definitely linearly dependent okay sir you say so this is about this now problem. let us continue with the problems in the uh next session okay sir and this is an important concept which you have to understand the collinearity parallel coplanarity non coplanarity linearly dependent linearly independent all these are very important please all these are very important and we will be continuing with this in the next session uh, we will work out the problems based on this concept